Hi there and welcome back to the channel. I am here in the Fiori Launchpad and today we will talk about this application called Asset Accounting Overview. Let's click on this one and we are forwarded to the start screen of the application. First of all we will choose a company code. Let's say 1010 in my example. We must choose a ledger, so 0L, then a currency type as well as the fiscal year for which we want the information to be displayed, the period and we must choose exactly one depreciation area. Let's select the search help. Let me take this one. We could even filter for certain asset classes or adapt the filters if necessary. As always, you can save the current filters via this button here. Now let's click on go. You can see several different cards opened. This application here is quite important as it provides easy access to key information within our asset accounting. Let me actually scroll out a bit of the page so that you can see more of those cards. And before we start talking about the individual cards over here, I want to show you something. Because in the upper part of your screen you can click on the user profile and then you can select manage cards. With this option you can choose which cards should be visible. So as I want to show you all the cards, I will select those ones over here as well. However, please be aware that if you activate more cards, then the performance of this application will suffer in the end. So meaning that you should choose wisely what you want to see. Let's click on OK. Now you can see more cards appeared. And we will now go through the different cards so I can give you a brief overview of what you can do with those cards. We will start here in the upper left hand corner with the Asset Master Worklist. This worklist shows the current number of assets divided by their status. So as you can see, either in process, capitalized or retired asset. So it looks at the asset lifecycle. We can hover over the different elements of our graph you can see over here and then more information is being displayed as you can see like that. I'm not clicking on the graph. I'm just hovering over it. Then we have two areas here. We could click on this area or on the individual elements of our graph and by doing so we are forwarded to another application. Let me showcase this by clicking on the status capitalized. And as you can see, we are forwarded to the detailed screen of the application called Display Asset Master Worklist. And quite importantly, the output is already filtered. As you recall, I clicked on the capitalized assets. And as you can see over here, we were directly forwarded to the filter for the capitalized assets. So it's kind of case sensitive. Here, as said, you can see that this application displays our assets by the different status. We can even select the asset over here to display more information and navigate to the Managed Fixed Assets application to display the master data. But I will explain you this application in another session more extensively. Then we can scroll to the right to display even more information if necessary. Let's go back for now. Next off we have the Asset Balance Chart View. This is a key performance indicator showing the total planned asset net book values as of the end of the fiscal year and also the period we selected over here in this section. As always, we have this upper section showing the total plant value for our assets. And then down here we have some different graphs. We can hover over them like that. So more information is being displayed. And as you can see, the assets are now separated by the asset class. However, we could choose here the drop down menu and also select other filter criteria if necessary. If we do so, then the graph reloads and now it shows, for instance here, the information by account determination and so on. As always, we can click on the upper section or on one of the graphs. Let's do it for the upper section this time. And we are forwarded to the so-called Asset Balances application, where we can filter for our asset balances by various dimensions, as you can see here on the left-hand side. So I could either drag and drop those dimensions into our columns and also into the rows, or via those buttons, I could also assign the available fields to the columns or rows. And then in the middle section, we can see the output like that. Okay, let's go back. Next off, we have the depreciation to be posted card. And this card shows the value to be posted by the depreciation type for the fiscal period and also the year we specified over here. And now you can see the total depreciation for our period. And also further down, we can see it's divided by the depreciation type like ordinary depreciation or over here an unplanned depreciation. We can click on the upper section on one of the graphical elements. Let's do the latter one. And also here you can see we are forwarded to the application that we have seen before. So the asset balances. But this time the selection focused on the depreciation. Let's go back. 
We have another card for the asset transactions. This card shows the acquisitions and also the retirements displayed by the asset class or even other criteria again. Here you can see the filter for acquisitions or retirements and we can as always click on this section or on one of the elements. Let's do the former one this time. And this time we are forwarded to an application called asset transactions where the different asset transactions are be displayed. As you can see, the page already loaded with the filters from our asset accounting overview application. However, over here the company code is being displayed with the total asset transaction value. We can click on this arrow over here to navigate into the details and as you can see it's classified by the asset transaction type. Also it's possible to right click on this arrow and say expand all. And now the information is displayed still per asset transaction type but with the different journal entries and also values. Okay, let's go back. Next off we have a card called manage fixed assets. This card shows the number of all active assets as of today's date. Here we can see the number of assets if we hover over or even here it's written. We can click on one of the sections which forwards us to the managed fixed assets application. However, this application will only work if the universal parallel accounting is enabled in your system. Let's go back and scroll down a bit. On the left hand side we have some quick links so we can navigate into one of those which will forward us then to the respective application. And by the way, we can also, as you can see, make this card smaller or larger so that more or less information is being displayed. And now it's a good time to show you that we can drag and drop those cards and thereby change the position as we please. Now let's go to the assets under construction card. Displaying the assets under construction in the fiscal year and also period we specified in the filters above. And they are separated by different criteria, so by amount, acquisition date, either descending or ascending. And always the top amounts are being displayed. So let's click on this one. And we are forwarded again to our asset balances, this time filtered for the assets under construction. Let's go back. Next off we have the asset depreciation values card. This card shows the asset depreciation values, as always filtered for our fiscal year and period we inserted above. And those depreciation values can be displayed for ordinary depreciation, special or unplanned depreciation. We can click on one of those values, as always, forwarding us to the asset balances app that you know by now. Let's go back, scroll down a bit. We have an asset balances card and this card shows us the total planned book values for our assets and the net amount is being displayed. We can also choose by date if necessary. Then we can click on one of those and as always this forwards us to the asset balances application. The filters already applied. Let's go back, scroll down a bit. We have one more card for assets under construction aging. So this shows us how long those assets have been under construction so to say, either by first transaction date or by the last one. And this is one of the only applications where we can't click on this section over here. We can only click on those sections you can see. So if I click on this one, we are forwarded to our asset transactions application. Let's go back and scroll down. Here we have four more cards we will talk about. The asset acquisitions card shows the total value of acquisitions within our selected period. And here you can see we can click on each one of those sections. If we select one, then this forwards us again to the asset transaction application. Going back, we also have a card to display our asset transactions by the different types. So this is quite important because it shows us the proportion of acquisitions and retirements in a selected period. So the acquisitions in this period were much higher as the retirements as you can see. If we select one of those elements or the upper section like that, we are again forwarded to the asset transactions application. Let's go back. Then we have a small card for asset retirements. So this card shows us the total value of retirements within a selected period. So in the end this card displays a subset of this card. Because this minus 10,000 you will also see if you hover over the retirements here. We can click on one of those which will again forward us to the asset transactions application. Let's go back. And last but not least we have the origin of assets. So this card displays the origin of our assets selected by country and region or by the supplier. But this really depends on how you maintained your asset master data. If we click on the element over here, we are forwarded to our asset balances application with the relevant filters already applied. Let's go back. So far so good, we have talked about the different cards. You can always save what is being displayed over here. And there you have different options. 
So the upper section you can save via this, as I've shown you before, and the whole application as it's being displayed right now, you could save via this button and then click on save as tile. Just say personal, copy it like that, and then we assign it to one of our pages, apply and save. If we now go back to the home screen and in the my home section, you can see this is our application as the accounting overview personal with all our personal settings. This marks the end of the video. I hope you liked it. If so, then please subscribe to the channel and activate the bell. See you next time.